Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and today is going to be a very interesting to special tutorial. We are going to match to life. So in this image in front of you, which one do you think is fake? I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. And a rollover. So the one on the right was fake and this is the real one. This tutorial is going to be an introduction to how to create a CG twin and then match it to a real object. This is going to be a multi-part tutorial. The first part is to set up our camera. After that, we're going to set up our lighting and then we're going to composite all together to create a CG twin. So how it's done for you, the first thing you need to do is find an object and I highly recommend a simple object where you need to find an, an object and then you're going to take pictures in multiple locations with multiple different lights. Now I chose an ambulance a little toy ambulance because I thought it was appealing and then I took pictures in all types of flat surfaces that's gonna be important especially since this is gonna be this might be potentially your first time doing match still life so I highly recommend that you pick a flat surface otherwise you are gonna have to compensate for the curvature of whatever object you place this on so the second thing you gotta remember is to put enough space for your CG twin so in this case it's not very good because this is all in the center but for this one, it potentially has a, a place for the CG twin. This one is also kind of nice, but the issue is that there's not much room for the CG twin and there's complicated shadows. So I'd probably avoid that one as well. At the end, I ended up with this one, with this photo. And I even threw little toy cars at the back just to kind of make sure that this whole thing looks like it's uh, something that a child just threw in the backyard, was playing and they left it behind. So what I liked about this is the shadow and the color and also the way the place it's located and it just seems really, really kind of quaint. Now the important part about matching your, your fake, your CG version to the real one is the colors. So notice how the light falls onto the object and how the shadows change the color of the object from white to a little bit of a gray. This is actually a little bit more blue and so on and so forth. And the shadow is a little bit blue. So all of this is really key information when I create that CG twin. The next thing I did was actually take a picture of the CG twin and this is going to help me get accurate shadows. So once I create it and I place it in a similar location, it should look something similar to this. Now you can take it laid out a grid and lay, and lay it out and you can use this to help you with um, Maya because you can match this with the Maya grid. Um, unfortunately, I was a noob and I folded the paper, so at the end I couldn't use this to get a correct camera angle, but I can use the perspective lines to be able to do that. So we're going to do that today with setting up the camera. You also need to get reflections. Important, this is something very important that's going to make your uh, CG Twin look great and realistic is because you've captured realistic reflections. And one way to do that is with a garden ball. Believe it or not, those reflective chrome balls out there in people's gardens are in fact useful for visual effects. So what's interesting about a chrome ball is though, it looks like it didn't capture the back information. This information right here on the side is actually warped reflections from the back. So just by taking a picture of this chrome ball, I'll be able to get reflections. Now this isn't a perfect chrome ball, and, uh, and it's got a little bit of dust and nicks, but it's gonna be enough to give me some nice reflections. It's not gonna be visual effects quality, but it is going to be really, it's gonna be good enough for this exercise. Now you need to model your object accurately, so make sure that you detail it really well, and also your textures. You always have to have bump map, you always have to have some sort of uh, color variation, and um, notice that I put a little bit of detail in the tires, and so on and so forth. So make sure that when you take a look at your real object, it looks, you're gonna try to capture it as best as possible. And then once we get all of our stuff together, we are going to render out a bunch of render layers in Arnold's called AOVs, and we're gonna render out a bunch of passes so that we can composite it all together to get the final image. Now, in the past, I used Shake, that's no longer around. You can use Nuke, but in this tutorial, we're gonna be using After Effects. And at the end, you're gonna get the CG Twin. So it's multiple steps. This is a multi-step tutorial. It's going to take a lot of practice, but hopefully this tutorial is going to help you get, get an understanding of how it works and uh, how you can create objects that match to real life. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is my model. And if I render it out, it's got this car. This is my little, it's got a little bit of butt map. It's got the Arnold's render shader. It's, uh, it's already ready to go. And it's got some lights in there just so I can see what's going on with my shader or with my car. 
By the way, you can download this at academicphoenixplus.com and you can follow along. So if you're more than welcome to download and follow along. All right, let's go to source images. And in here, you're gonna find the actual photo itself. Right here. You're gonna find the textures, you're gonna find the floor textures, you're gonna find a terrible grid and my set attempt at terrible grids. You also can see that I use different materials to try to capture the shadow information and the color. And uh, this is facing this one direction and then uh, multiple different types of things that I shot. Here's some wheels, here's me taking a picture with the chrome ball and a couple more textures. And I think that's it, great. So the textures are set up, ready to go. The first thing we wanna do is put our image in our camera. So I'm gonna to go to create a camera. Camera, and then I'm gonna look through selected. Well, okay, here we are. I'm gonna turn on this so I can tell the difference between my perspective and my camera. Um, because it tells me right here, this is camera. And then I'm gonna call it render cam just because it makes things easier for me. Render camera. All right, let's go and do an image plane. So make sure you're looking through the render cam, make sure the render cam is selected, not your perspective. Go to view image plane, import image, and uh, look for your source images. You can always click on your source images. By the way, I hope you set your project because I already did. But just in case, make sure you set your project. Okay, going back to this, view, image plane, import image. And uh, if you go to your source images, um, we're looking for the picture that I want to use, which is this one, car 001, open. Okay, so right off the bat, you're going to notice that... Um, um, we really need to get our perspective to be accurate to the image. So I'm going to go over here, take a cut. Let's see, where is it? Car zero one, right click properties. I'm going to go to my details and this is a huge image, 2816 by 1880. So to capture that, I'm going to go to my render settings. I'm going to go down here and type in, type in 26, whoops. It's 2816 by 1880. There we go. So now it's going to match our reference. Now, unfortunately, if I render this, it's going to be ginormous because that's a huge file. Oops, let me skip that of that because it's gigantic. So what we need to do is reduce it. So I'm going to uh, select my maintained width height ratio on, make sure that's active. And then I'm going to change my width to 1024. So now it's not going to take forever to render. There you go. It's kind of strange seeing it floating. Okay. Now that we have that set up, the next thing we need to do is somehow get our grid and our car to match the environment. Now I can try my best to try to put the car exactly where it's located, but the car is really distracting. I'm going to hide my car and I'm actually going to be using the Maya grid. Now the trick here is to use the, the camera to get the perspective line. Do you guys see how it's got those lines right here for Maya or for the grid? My goal is to try to match this as much as I can. So it does take a little practice, guys. I will tell you, I will be, I will ask you to be patient um, because it does take a little bit of finagling to try to get this to look correct. Now, if this is a little hard for you to see uh, the grid, you're more than welcome to create a plane like so, which is very similar to the Maya one. And then um, you can turn on your wireframe. Sometimes, Sometimes that's easier to see, or sometimes it's just easier to see it shaded and then you just manipulate it like this. So you can pretend that there's a ground there. So for your, for you is for try to get your image to match uh, this reference as best as possible. So be patient with yourself. It does take a little practice. And I'm almost there. I'm trying to see my perspective lines just a little bit. I'm using a tablet and it seems a little sensitive when I rotate it. So another thing to consider is actually the camera itself. What type of camera did you use and what type of lens did you use? 
Now the default camera for our, our render camera is 35 millimeters. That is mostly for modeling, which has the least amount of warping. But I probably, I don't remember exactly what camera I used, but usually I'm gonna put in a 40. Um, so that's a 40 millimeter lens. So now with this, hopefully I'll get a little bit more accurate perspective. So I'm starting to see my, I'm looking at these two lines right here and that seems to match. And I'm gonna move this over here. And this one actually seems to match pretty good over here as well. And then over here, the back is not too bad. It's a little skewed. But then if you analyze my picture, there's something off about my picture. And what's off is that this isn't actually flushed flat on the ground. What's off is that this is actually rotated a little bit. So that's going to make it a little bit more challenging for me. So as long as I match the lines as best as I can, I do have to consider that this plane that it's going to be lied on, it's going to be lying on, is slightly rotated. So now that I have this slightly rotated, I think I have a pretty good perspective. So let me see. I'm just trying to match my... It's not bad. Can probably be slightly better, but it's slightly rotated, and I'm just watch. I'm just looking at my lines here, trying to see if do I need to rotate something more? Can I just rotate this a little bit more? You know, maybe I should scale it. Something like that, maybe. That seems like a lot. All right, let's see. Maybe this would be better. So something close to this, just a little bit skewed. All right. I'm going to select my camera and I'm going to lock it because sometimes I will accidentally move it. And then I'm going to grab this and freeze its transformation so it zeroes everything out. I'm going to call this the ground plane. Now bring back my toy car. Oh boy, it's huge. So since I locked it, I can either take my car and scale it down or I can unlock my camera and just kind of pull back. I'm gonna lock it again and scale this up and then maybe move things around again. Something like that. Okay. So again, modify freeze transformations and we'll see how that goes. Cool. All right, so now that I have this set up, here's my car, and now I have to make sure that it falls into the place. So I'm gonna go into my perspective and it's floating, right? So here's my camera, and that's my image plane down there. Oops. Oh boy. And I'm gonna take this and make sure that it's on the ground. Now, again, it's having some you know, slightly rotated. So I'm looking at the ground, making sure that it actually touches the ground a little bit and see something like this. Tablet's driving me crazy. Okay. All right. And I'm going to hide this. Oops, it's facing the wrong way. So I'm going to have to, so what I'm going to try to do next is place this without moving it up and down. I'm going to try to place this on the character. Now, Another challenge of this piece is that this is actually not flat, but this is rocky. So this could be, so that's something else I got to consider. Maybe it's slightly tipped it. Maybe it's slightly, you know, all over the place. So I have to kind of eyeball it and see if I can get the character, uh, it's not a character, but get the van to actually match the ambulance to get to match as best as I can. And actually that's not too bad. It's a, I think my, it's a little big, so I might have to maybe rotate it a little bit whoops too much so again i'm just kind of eyeballing it and trying to make sure that it it tries to get as close as possible and i'm going to bring back my ground plane go to perspective and see make sure that it's not penetrating the floor like this so i might have to you know bring it up a little bit maybe slightly rotate it so that it's actually on the ground I don't want it floating because once we do shadows, you're going to see it floating. It's going to look really strange. 
Okay, let's go back to render cam. Hide this, hide this again. It's looking pretty good. Not bad. All right, so once I figured out where the object is going to be located, again, I'm going to select this and freeze this transformation just because I'm terrified. And I'm going to save. That is the first part of this tutorial. What we did was take a bunch of pictures, set up our render cameras, uh, set up our scene, take a look at perspective. And the next video, we're going to start lighting our object. So I hope that was helpful. I know that was a lot of information. It was mostly theory based, so we know what to do. So this is the first step is camera setup. The second is going to be to start lighting it and troubleshooting it. And after that, it's going to be render layers or uh, all the layers that we need to composite. And then after that, we're going to composite everything together. So it's going to be awesome. All right, guys, I'm very excited about this exercise and or this project. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Leave any comments or questions below and share this with anybody that you feel it would be helpful with. Of course, I would always appreciate that. All right, guys, I will see you in the next tutorial.